I spray Give you all what your life is I know what I say Hey beauties, it's your girl Ama and welcome back to the channel. I'm really excited about today's video. See, we just getting into it today. I'm really excited about today's video because I keep getting questions about housing. So I can only assume it's time for you guys to start submitting that stuff for next year. Actually, y'all know, y'all know this by now. Before we get started, I have to show my little fit. So today, I am wearing my University of Maryland Res Life shirt because I did work for the Department of Resident Life. I worked for Res Life three out of my four years at Maryland. I worked there my sophomore to senior year. In today's video, I'll be telling you about all the dorms on campus and like I said I only went to Maryland for four years so there's not many dorms I could have lived in and so I have recruited the help of some of my friends so thank you guys so much for helping me out with this video I asked my friends to come up with a list of things that they felt like you guys should know before living in those dorms so those includes pros and cons those just include general things about the building and the community as a whole this is so exciting because I know this video is going to be amazing. So I asked six friends to help me film this video and out of the six of them, four of them worked in Res Life for three years just like me. So we're very well equipped to share this information with y'all. And my other two friends, they live there so they are very well versed in the topic at hand. So I'm going to start off with a general breakdown before we get into details of the dorms. So the University of Maryland College Park is split into two campuses. We have North Campus and then we have South Campus. And within those two campuses, so North and South, you have has six communities where residence halls are located. Res Life, if anyone from Res Life is watching this, hey! So the six communities are the Cambridge community, the Denton community, and the Ellicott community. These three communities are located on North Campus. Then we have Leonardtown, North Hill, and then South Hill, and those are located on South Campus! Y'all, I feel like I'm like giving, I'm really breaking it down for y'all. Like, what? If you've not thumbs up this video already, what's up? Like, thumbs it up and subscribe. Let's keep it going. So within those communities, are where the actual residence halls are located. So we have the campus, which separates into north and south, and then we have communities, and then we have the residence halls. So I'm gonna read the dorms in each community. So the Cambridge community consists of Bel Air Hall, Cambridge Hall, Centerville Hall, Chester Town Hall, and Cumberland Hall. Denton community consists of Denton Hall, Easton Hall, Elkton Hall, and Oakland Hall. Ellicott community consists of Ellicott Hall, Hagerstown Hall, and La Plata. Leonardtown community consists of Old Leonardtown and New Leonardtown. And then North Hill, dang, that's a lot. Oh my gosh, that's a lot, whoa. North Hill has Anne Arundel Hall, Caroline Hall, Carroll Hall, Dorchester, Prince Frederick, Queen Anne's, St. Mary's, Somerset, Wacomico. Some people say Wycomico. I'm pretty sure it's Wacomico, but child, I don't know. And then this one, some people say Worcester, some people say Worcester, so it will be all on the screen. And then South Hill also has a lot, I knew that. So it has Allegheny Hall, Baltimore Hall, Calvert Hall, Cecil Hall, Charles Hall, Frederick Hall, Garrett Hall, Hartford Hall, Howard Hall, Kent Hall, Montgomery Hall, Prince George's Hall, Talbot Hall, and Washington Hall. So the halls are named after counties and like different places in Maryland, so I think that's pretty cool. So we're going to start with North Campus and move in chronological order. So we're going to start with Cambridge Community. So shout out to my friend who did this. He wrote a lot. So he wrote a lot. He was really prepared to give y'all all the tea. So he even wrote down his expertise so I can share it. And like I said, he was one of the people who worked in Res Life for three years. So he lived in Centerville as a freshman. He was a part of the Scholars SGC program. Um, like I said, he worked for Res Life. He knows a lot of the RAs, the CAs, the RDs, and many of the staff in that community. So that is perfect. I'm just gonna read what he wrote. So Cambridge community has five buildings. He starts off with Cambridge. Cambridge is the newest and nicest and mostly home to business scholars program. It only has five floors or something. When I get into Denton community, you'll see how many floors those dorms have. But he says Cambridge has five floors, but they're very nice. So their bathrooms are very nice. And the main floor has a lot of study spaces. It has a really great kitchen and lounges. He said the basement has even more space to study and the lounges are very nice. Oh, Centerville. Centerville has AC. It's mostly home to the Science Scholars Program. He said the building is split into north and south, aka the floors don't connect to the other side except the fifth and seventh floors. So I'll just explain that a little bit. Usually a floor is like this and you can walk, you know, cross to either side. So he's saying that you can't cross. It's split except on the fifth and seventh floor. It has a really spacious lobby with four study rooms and a huge study room in the basement. The kids in this building tend to be very STEM heavy and thus they do not go out often. Consider this building if you're focused on your studies. Okay, you heard him. Now we're going to talk about Cumberland. Cumberland has AC and it has a window unit. It's home to the Business Scholars Program. It has decent study space in the lobby, pretty big central lounges. The building has a lot of business kids, so they tend to go out a lot more. Um, the RD is 
interesting so don't cross her and that is all he said about Cumberland. Up next is Bel Air. Bel Air has AC. It's a half building so it has only three or four floors and it's home to the Art Scholars Program. Then there's Chestertown which has no AC. It's also a half building so it has three or four floors and it has no elevator so consider that when you're moving in. And Chestertown is home to the ETE Scholars Program. And then he says, I hear these are really nice tight-knit communities in these half buildings. The population and makeup of these buildings are very scholar program driven. So they often have a shared identity. But keep in mind, just because these are like scholar heavy buildings, that not everyone who's in there is part of the scholars program. So then he goes on to say, so there's more. Beware, only Centerville and Cumberland have front desks. If you live in Centerville and Cambridge, you have to go to the Centerville front desk to get your packages, mail, spare key, etc. If you live in Cumberland, Bel Air, or Chestertown, also known as the BCC, I knew that, yes, the BCC. You go to Cumberland to get your packages, mail, spare keys, etc. Therefore, your swipes will automatically allow you to get into the Centerville Cumberland lobbies if you live in these buildings. Okay, I feel like I should explain as I go. At Maryland, to get into the dorms, you have to swipe your ID and you automatically get access to the dorm you live in. But what he's saying is that some of the dorms in the Cambridge community don't have front desk where you can get your packages and stuff and so if that's the case if you don't live in a dorm that has a front desk you will be given access to another building where you're supposed to pick up your packages. Cambridge Community has the Cambridge Community Quad which has a lot of great outdoor tables, grass, and even a hammock. Oh yes they do hammock haven. It also has the income which is called the North Campus Convenience Store but we call it income because the times are really inconvenient. Y'all will pick up on that when you get to campus. And he says finally there's also CCC which is a Cambridge Community Center where there are multiple rooms where the scholars classes are held but when there are no classes in there it's a great study space and it's open until 11 p.m. he believes. Y'all that was a beautiful breakdown of the Cambridge community but now he's gonna go into the pros and cons. So some pros of the Cambridge community are it's a really great community to meet people especially in scholars it has easy access to the income it's really close to science buildings especially Centerville and Cambridge but they're all really close it's the closest North Campus community to the CS building it's really close to Xfinity Center it's close to Epley which is the gym on North Campus this is the main gym on campus there's another one called Richie that's on South Campus and you have easy access to La Plata Beach the cons of Cambridge community are it's kind of far from the diner but it's not that bad if you get stuck in Chestertown, well, good luck, Charlie. Yikes. Okay. The barn kind of stinks if you live in Centerville. Um, Low-key Cumberland has roaches, but they all have roaches, to be honest. Uh, ooh. Bus rides are kind of bad to hear, but I didn't care if they changed anything. Uh, Construction is always happening, so... Yeah, the bus rides might be changed. And he said that the buildings are all kind of non-traditional, not like Denton, Ellicott, etc. They all have weird shapes. His closing remarks are, Overall, the Cambridge community is a really chill community. You can find people that go out all the time, and you can find people who are really messing their schoolwork and everything in between. That was a very written and elaborate summary, description, whatever word you want to use, of the Cambridge community. He broke down each dorm and gave you guys some tea on the dorms and he gave you pros and cons on the community as a whole. So shout out to you. Now we're gonna move on to the Denton community which is in my area of expertise. I lived in the Denton community three out of my four years at Maryland and I also worked in the Denton community three out of my four years at Maryland. So the Denton community consists of Denton Hall, Easton Hall, Elkton Hall, and Oakland Hall. I lived in all of them besides Elkton. I lived in Easton my freshman year. Y'all know that by now. I lived in Oakland my sophomore year. My junior year, I lived in Courtyards, which is an off-campus apartment, still affiliated with UMD. And then my senior year, I lived in Denton. Then I worked in the Denton community my sophomore through my senior year. So each dorm in the Denton community has eight floors, so that's different from the Cambridge community. Specifically for Easton Hall, I would say Easton Hall houses primarily freshmen. As to who lives in Easton, honestly, I felt like it was a mix of everybody. There were regular students, so students who are not affiliated with the program. There were Freshman Connection students. And then Carillon is also housed in Easton. In Easton, you can either do boy-girl living or on some floors, it can be all girls and all boys. So the floor I lived on was boy girl. So me and my roommate's room is here. Our next door neighbors were guys. The people across from us were guys. And then the people here were girls. So it was a mix. If you want to be technical, we lived on the boys' side because we were closest to the boys' bathroom. So we'd have to walk all across the hall to get to the girls' bathroom, which is kind of inconvenient because we have to walk past the lounge, which has a little bit of glass. So, you know, people seeing your towel or whatever, 
it's kind of weird. So eventually my roommate and I started going to the first floor because the girls bathroom was directly below us. Even though the floor I lived on was boy girl boy girl some of the other floors are girls who live on this side and guys who live on that side. The bathrooms in Easton are community bathrooms but if I had to say I would say the bathrooms in Easton are the worst bathrooms in the whole Denton community. I'm gonna try to draw a picture for you. So this is the shower stall it's like a box like just imagine yeah imagine this a box okay so these are the walls right here this is like where the shower faucet is and then this is the curtain it's tiny like the curtain can get real close like I'm talking about touching you others are a little bit spacious but in my opinion I think the bathrooms in Eastern are literally the worst even though I think the bathrooms in Easton are the worst bathrooms literally in the whole community, they do get cleaned regularly by, you know, housekeeping, so that's good. In the Cambridge community, he talked a lot about the basement. The basement in Easton is, I would say, typically off limits. The laundry machines are located in the basement, but aside from that, the Carolina community is housed in the Easton basement. Like, I don't know if they do classes in there, but they have a space in there. And then the Department of Resident Life has, like, space in the basement as well. So when I lived in Easton, I did not really go to the basement at all. I only went there like literally once just to see. The kitchen in Easton is located on the first floor. It's located like by the lobby. The kitchen is recently renovated so it's a really nice kitchen actually. It's just kind of tiny. It's a really small kitchen but it's really cute. In Easton there's a front desk where you can get your keys, your package, or everything. Easton also has elevators so that's not a problem when you move in. Easton Hall has AC so we love that over here. We love AC dorms. At least I do chat. But you can't control your AC so that's the unfortunate thing. So that's all I have to say about Easton Hall. So now we're gonna move on to Oakland. That's where I lived my sophomore year. So in Oakland, Oakland houses primarily sophomore. Whose car is that? Oakland houses primarily sophomores. Oakland is suite style. There's semi suites and they're regular suites. For the semi suites, there's a room of two people connected with the bathroom and then another room is conjoined. So it's like four people sharing a bathroom. The bathrooms are pretty nice and spacious. It has like a little toilet stall and then it has double sinks and then it has like a little shower, you know, place to shower and you can pull the curtain. Yeah, I'm filming a video, so. No, we beat your face. Oh, man, here we go. Oh, damn, that's what that's been doing. Uh, it's a rest life video. Do you want to say anything, Mr. Former RA? Yeah, I do. What you want to tell the people? I'm talking about Oakland. I'm actually talking about Oakland right now. You talking about Oakland? Yeah, I didn't get too much in detail, but do you want to say anything? Yeah. What you want to tell him? Um, so he did not really shed light on Oakland. I don't even know what I was saying before I called him. Oh, wait, was I talking about... Okay, yeah. No one cleans the bathroom for you. You clean the bathroom yourself. But you can also go downstairs to the front desk and get some toilet paper. So those are the semi-suites. Oakland also has suite styles where it's just two people. So it will be you and your roommate and then y'all will share a bathroom. Similarly to Easton, Oakland does have elevators. I'm just going to put this out there. All the dorms in the Denton community have elevators. So in Oakland, the elevators are a little bit more fancy because they speak. Oakland was built in 2012, so that's the newest dorm in the Denton community. And it's one of the newest dorms on campus in general. Oakland has its own front desk where you can go pick up your packages, your keys, all that. Oakland has laundry machines on each floor, you guys. Washers and dryers, all of that on each floor. Oakland is real fancy. The basement Oakland houses math success, so there's a program on campus. If you need help with math, you can go into math success. There's like certain hours to operate, and then you can get help there. If you live on the first floor of Oakland, they have super, 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 super high ceilings. Like, it's actually amazing. Overall, Oakland is a really pretty building compared to all the other buildings in the Denton community. It's just newer. It has more glass. It's just a prettier building overall. And I would say if you're a freshman, I don't know if you want to live in Oakland. So when I lived in Oakland, like I said, it was primarily sophomore. There was a freshman on our floor. He, like, got randomly placed there. And he was just telling us that it's hard to make friends in Oakland. Oakland because we're all sophomores he's a freshman trying to get acclimated with campus but you know we're sophomore we think we know something because we finished our freshman year and we already have our friend groups so he found that he didn't really make friends in Oakland as a freshman I also have another friend she's my year but our freshman year she got placed in Oakland and she basically said the same thing so just keep that in mind if you're a freshman trying to get into Oakland Oakland does have AC it has this little button on the wall and People like to push it like it does something. Like, I, I don't know if it really controls it. Like, when I say people, I am people. My friends are people. We are people. We are the ones who do this. Like, you push the button. Like, sometimes it'll stop the air. But I don't know if you can really control it. But it does have, like, some little black circle button on the wall. So that is all I'm going to say about Oakland. Now we're going to move to Elkton. I didn't live in Elkton at all. So 
this is gonna be real quick um elkton also does have a front desk there so you can also get your keys packages and all that other stuff elkton also does have elevators i believe the elevators are recently renovated so those are really nice elkton also has ac in there and then it also has you know community bathroom i believe the community bathrooms in elkton and denton are similar so i'll touch a little bit more on it when i get into denton elkton also has laundry machines downstairs elkton is literally right in front of one of the bus stops and it's the closest dorm in the denton community to the diner kind of I would say I would say Denton and Elkton are the closest to diner because you can get there different ways but Elkton is literally right in front of the Elkton bus stop so that is very handy so that's all I'm gonna say about Elkton it's very similar to Denton and Easton so we're gonna move on to Denton so Denton I lived there my senior year Denton houses primarily freshmen and sophomores like a good mix and you're like I'm a did you just say you lived there senior year? Yes, I did. Um, so I lived there my senior year. I lived there with freshmen and sophomores. Benton also has eight floors, just like all the other dorms in this community. It has AC in there. You can't control your AC. Denton also has humidifiers in the room and there are no closet doors. I remember when I moved into Denton, I was like, yo, is this normal? But they took off the closet doors, so... I might insert a picture. I think I have a picture because I was literally so shook when I moved in. I was like, where is the door? Denton's basement was recently renovated. So it's really nice. It's super pretty. It has a nice kitchen when people keep it clean. When they don't, it looks a little, you know. But when they keep it clean, it looks good. Um, Denton's basement also has like a cute little steady space lounge type of thing. Denton Hall does have laundry machines downstairs. Going to the bathrooms, like I said, I believe the bathrooms at Elkton and Denton are similar. And they're not like Easton at all. Like I said, Easton's like a box, whatever shape that is, square, rectangle, chow, whatever. Denton has stalls, which I appreciate better than the Easton one. So I like that aspect of the community bathrooms in Denton better than I do in Easton. The bathrooms in Denton, just like Easton and Elkton, are cleaned regularly by housekeeping. So shout out to housekeeping for that. The RD Denton has a dog, which you might see occasionally. Um, there's also a bus stop right in front of Denton. That's all I have to say specifically about the dorms that are located in the Denton community. Now some pros about that community is that you're right by the 24 hour shop and the 24 hour shop is a convenience store that is supposed to be open 24 hours seven days a week I say suppose because I'm pretty sure I said in one video that you know me and my friends went out we came back and it was closed this is a rare occasion I understand that but it did happen to me one time me and my friends and it happened to another friend as well but like that is a really off chance for the most part you're supposed to be able to get there 24 hours seven days a week so it's not like the income before midnight you can just walk in and you know you don't have to swipe but after midnight you have to use your swipe id to get inside um i'm not really sure if this is a pro or a con but there's a diner in the um denton community it's called 251 now i say i'm not sure if it's a pro or a con because it's a diner so it's like food that's close by however 251 is rarely open like it has really limited hours another pro to the denton community is that it's close enough to Epley, you can definitely get closer, but it's not super far. Another pro is that it's close enough to School of Public Health, but you know, you can definitely get closer with the Cambridge community, literally. So that's all I'm gonna say about the Denton community. And now we're gonna move on to our last community in North Campus. So now we're moving on to the Ellicott community. So a friend that shared this information with me about the Ellicott community is an RA in that community. And he's been an RA there for three years. So my friend he wrote an essay like he gave us introduction paragraph and everything i'm going to read it too so let's start with his opening paragraph living on campus can be a rewarding experience if you make it one the residence halls allow you to develop a community with others and gives you an edge up in creating friendships the ra's resident assistants also try their best to provide engaging activities and programs to make sure that you enjoy your semesters on campus as well that is a very ra answer y'all this is really an essay i love him for this as with some things in life, things are not always the sunny side. Specifically with the Ellicott community, some positives are that you're closer to many of the amenities on campus, such as Epley, the pool, Stamp, the football stadium, the North Campus Diner. There's also La Plata Beach close by. I'm going to break right there. So North Campus Diner is located in the Ellicott community. So that 
right there is amazing. With this community, you also have a good chunk of different students who are in honors, letters and sciences, etc. So I would say that the learning atmosphere is pretty diverse as well as the culture one. So for my folks that like to go out, the bus stops are pretty close so you don't really have to run when trying to catch a ride. As mentioned above, the RAs are also really nice and have your best interests at heart. As previously stated, there are also some negatives as well. Although the diner is close by, some of the options they serve are a bit redundant and can be tasteless. That's not getting to the dining hall food, but I already gave y'all the tea about dining hall food, but yes. Tasteless. Yes, yes, yes. However, the mozzarella cheese sticks and wing nights do be hitting, bruh. Wing night? Hold on, it's taking me back. Give me a second. Give me a second. Y'all, I will crush on wing night. Like, wing night, for sure, you were seeing at the diner at 7 p.m. That yes wing night y'all y'all was seeing at the diner there with my wings and my mozzarella sticks those are good those are good you got to give credit where credit is due and that i will give credit to umd dining hall shout out to you and your wing nights okay i will give credit um also the community bathrooms can be an interesting experience if you've grown up with your own room and own bathroom switching to a shared space can be a little bit challenging but you learn to get used to it. The laundry rooms can also get messy as well. The machines break down quite often. One of the biggest disadvantages, especially if you live in Ellicott or Hagerstown, is that there's no AC, so during the warm weather, your room can feel like a dungeon. But just know you're not the only one going through it. Y'all, that is all the tea on the North Campus residence halls, specifically broken down into communities and then specifically broken down into more details about the various dorms in those communities. So now that we're done with North Campus, we're gonna move on to South Campus. We're gonna start off with Leonard Town because you know, we just really going in chronological order. So my friend who shared her thoughts about um, Leonard Town, she also worked with the Department of Resident Life for three years and specifically she worked in the Leonard Town community community for two years. So Leonard Town is broken up into apartments and she said for new Leonard Town each apartment has two doubles and two singles. She said for old Leonard Town it varies but it's usually two doubles. She's heard of roaches mold issues throughout all of Leonard Town but she's not experienced it. I'm not to be on the first floor because there are more bug issues. There's no in-unit laundry because the laundry machines are located in the community center. There's a larger living space compared to other places on campus. Some units have updated appliances. There are no microwaves. There's one in the community center. And it also can be loud since it's behind frat row, which always have parties going on. And then she also says that Leonardtown is far from campus. It's like a 20 to 25 minute walk to McKeldin. It's near Route 1 so you can walk to, you know, restaurants and bars. Um, you can control your own AC and heating and they have a nice kitchen. That is all the tea on the Leonardtown community. Now we are going to move to North Hill. A friend who shared things about North Hill lived in a lot of these dorms. She said that the pros of living in this community that's close to classes and it's close to one of the dining halls. It's close to McKeldin and there's a shop nearby. I think she's referring to the South Campus convenience store. So that one, I believe the hours are better than Incon, but they are not as good as the Denton community. It's close to Stamp, it's close to Jewish Center, it's close to Chapel, it's close to Muslim Center. She's basically saying that this community is super close to a lot of things, but she said the cons are that most of the dorms do not have AC, it's old, it has mold, it has crusty bathrooms, jail cell-like rooms, they can get really hot in the summertime, almost like you're in a sauna. Um, most freshmen don't live there, so if you're a freshman, you know, you might not want that. Most of the times you have to go to different buildings to get packages, so because they don't have their own front desk. Similar to the Cambridge community, not all the dorms have front desks, so you'd have to go to another dorm to go get your packages. She said that um, also then rodent problems, small closets, crappy lounges, unless they were renovated. So that is the T on North Hill. Now South Hill. South Hill has a lot of apartment styles, so I got two friends to share their you know experience with me. So they live in different buildings, so they're both gonna share what they thought. Um, I will say that the all girls dorm is located in this community. So for Baltimore Hall, my friend said Baltimore Hall was beautiful. I like that it was an apartment. So while you're on campus to experience everything, you were also in your own space, like the apartment. South Hill was beautiful and we we're close to Baltimore Avenue. Is that what it's called, Baltimore Avenue? Why does that sound so, Route 1, 
It's all the same, but I have not heard of being called Baltimore Avenue in a long time. It was a bit far from North Campus, but it was great. So for her, she would go to Annapolis Hall to get her work done or just meet up with her friends. She would also pick up packages from the Annapolis front desk. She loved living on that side of campus. She said that she thinks anywhere on the quad, so Allegheny, Montgomery, are all great places to live. Her bad experiences came from the school, like there were mold issues in her apartment. Um, once their heater broke and they were without heat for some days. Um, she'll say that since it's an apartment or a suite, you might want to live with someone who shares your own idea of cleanliness because you have more space to clean out besides your room. So that's the bathroom, the living room, the kitchen, and you guys have to take out trash. And yeah, she says some cons are that during the weekend, there was constant noise of people going out partying. And sometimes they would have people drunk lying on their like walkway. For Calvert Hall, it says pros of living in Calvert Hall is you live in an apartment style room. It was two floors, a full kitchen, a living room. The bathroom was nice. She was able to bus people in from her apartment. She didn't have to walk all the way downstairs to let them in. And it's close to the dining hall. The cons are that the rooms were small and it was a double. There was no elevator, so that made moving in a nightmare. And there's just so many steps because she lived on the third floor. No laundry in the building. She had to go to Hartford and it's not close to the main bus stop. So you guys, I hope you guys enjoyed listening to all the tea that all my friends shared about the communities at Maryland and specifically the residence halls at Maryland. Yo, I gotta go, Erin is waiting for me, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next week Sunday for another UMD video. Bye, beauties. I'm a girl from the UK. I tell her come if she wanna see me. See she love the queen and she love when it rains.